Hey guys, it's Sammy, aka Judge Dreadful, and today we're going to be covering the Diamond SMGs. I was going to be doing the rifles first, but Nuketown 24-7 came along and I thought, rifles all the way through Nuketown 24-7, I think I'll go with an SMG, just because it's going to be easier for getting the headshots and all that. So anyway, let's get on with some suggestions and tips for getting all those challenges done. So first up, you're going to have to get 100 headshots with every single SMG. Um, obviously you can just go for the gold for each one, but if you want to get them all diamond, as you probably know by now, you need to do every single one. So, this isn't really a hard challenge, some of them is going to be harder than others, like for example the Scorpion, I know has no headshot multiplier, so in essence there's not really much point in going for headshots other than to get the headshot challenge done. But something like a Red Dot Sight, or maybe the EOTech, is going to help you out because it's going to make it easier to pick out the headshots. Or alternatively, just shoot and eventually you're going to get headshots as you play. But if you want to rush through it, then perhaps check a red dot sight on. The SMGs have varying degrees of recoil, but it's pretty much always going to go up. Let it carry up to a headshot. Obviously, you're going to have to adjust this for distances as well. Also, if you're in a head-on gunfight, don't bother going for headshots because you're just going to die all the time. But if you, if you come across someone in the back, then, you know, by all means, go for it. And also don't forget to check out all the sniping spots because those snipers are always too busy, you know, looking at people miles away. So it's going to be easy for you to shoot them in the back of the head and line up perfectly. Of course, the science is also going to help you sneak up on, on people as well. But once you've done that, the rest of the challenges are going to unlock for you. The first one I recommend going for is for the 150 perks and no attachments. Uh, sorry, attachments and 150 perks. Combine them together just to save yourself some time. Otherwise, it's going to be 300 kills. For this I'd recommend using um, an S-more as a secondary or maybe a FHJ just to take out all the air support to make up for the fact that you can't have ghost or anything to counter it. And then I made use of either Tactician or I was using two lethals, two bouncing betties in my case. Um, you can use the, the tack insert to get a bit closer or you can use stuff like EMPs, flashes and concussions just to weaken your enemies and make those kills a lot easier. So once you've done that long and daunting task of killing 150 people with each weapon, it does take you quite a long while because there are quite a few uh, submachine guns, then my recommendation would be to go for trying to get the 10 bloodthirsties done. Because these SMGs are quite easy to use weapon, you could use whatever you want, but the classes I was using to get it done was uh, obviously the SMG with either a silencer, extending mags, uh, usually. Um, for the MSMC, I preferred long barrel. Uh, PDW, obviously you don't really need extended mags, so I was using fast mags instead. And the Chicom, I didn't need to let fire. I did actually use it a bit towards the end because I just got fed up with, um, I was quite tired when I was doing it and I just find it hard to do that burst in while my mind's not set on it. So if you feel like it, you can always put select fire on, replace uh, either the suppressor or perhaps extended mags. I was using the Perks Hardline and Flat Jacket just because uh, I didn't I know hardline doesn't actually help you to get a bloodthirsty but I was just I just found it was easy to get the high kill streaks with this setup so you know you could perhaps use hardline and maybe put a UAV count UAV on just to keep yourself off the map all the time dexterity is always useful just if you get caught when you're off guard when you're like running around or obviously climbing up stuff a lot faster is always useful and I kind of kind of used to it now I kind of find it hard to play the game without it also scavenger I was using that in conjunction with Betty's so I was um, using the Betty's to get close to the enemy uh, getting near that sort of where they're spawning I was using the bouncing Betty's to block off a, a perhaps an area which the enemy might be approaching from and then I was trying to kill the others and then if the bouncing Betty went off then I knew that someone was coming the other way even if I didn't get a kill with it and then finally I was using either EMP grenades or attack insert depending on what sort of game I was playing. If it was something like uh, demolition I'd be using attack insert more because obviously the spawns are a lot more fixed. Team deathmatch or um, kill confirmed I was using the EMP just because I'm trying to get the challenges done. Um, you could obviously use a concussion grenade, flash grenade, sensor, smoke, whatever you want there. You know it's up to you. So the final two challenges I'm going to give you the same recommendation as I always do. For the double kill medals, you just if you're finding trouble having them, then you just need to be more aggressive. Perhaps you might need the extended mags if you're finding it using too much ammo. Don't reload, just go on forward. You know, if you should be able to get the kills because the SMG is quite a good, good and powerful weapon, so you shouldn't have too much of a problem. Um, perhaps the suppressor as well, maybe because people won't notice you as much. Just things to think about, really. And then finally, the revenge medals. 
they they they're gonna come along as you as you play. Um, obviously, you need to die in order to get them. But I found that if I was using attack insert, then I'd always remember I'd be closer to where the person killed me usually. So you think, all oh, right, I know exactly where he is, and also you've got to jump because they're not going to be expecting you to know basically exactly where they are. So that's always useful as well. In terms of how to play the SMG, I'm sure most people really know how you play them, but some I see some people trying to use them as rifles, and they've sort of got like a varying degree of how close they should really be played. Like the MSMC, you can get away with playing like a rifle because it, it does make a pretty good rifle to be honest. Peacekeeper, just an awesome rifle weapon as well. But like I've got a couple of friends who are like, oh my god, man, this scorpion sucks. And I love the weapon, but the thing is you really have to be close to it. So make sure you're playing to the weapon strength. So if you're going to be trying to get in long range gunfights with a scorpion, you're going to lose a lot of time because that's not really where it's good. So make sure you're using the scorpion up close. Vectors, um, quite a good gun at all round ranges, quite good up close, quite good at long ranges. MP7, quite similar as well. Uh, PDW, just... I don't know man that gun's just crazy and you can just keep shooting forever with it so yeah just really think about um, where you want to be with the gun because it's not a long range weapon you want to be flanking if using the silencer as well but it's a really powerful weapon so I don't think many people are going to have too much problems with this so anyway guys I hope this has been useful to you and I'll speak to you later bye bye now bye bye